Welcome to Blue Talks. professional development course at my job forever. And for whatever reason, there was never enough money or it just wasn't the right time for that type of training. And then all of a sudden, it falls in my lap. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Woo! Just to show you that you never know how whatever you aspire for, how it's going to come about. It never is the, you know, a straight line between these types of things. And it got me to thinking about an old adage my mom used to tell me all the time. She used to say, maybe you've heard of this. The shortest distance between any two points, right, is a straight line. It's the mantra that we actually use to, as a guidepost to determine who we want to be and where we want to go and how we want to live. The who, the where, and the how. You know, I have a friend. She was born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee the home of Elvis Presley. Yeah. She grew up around the corner from Elvis Presley Boulevard. Her A to B plan was to move up to the big city, Washington, D.C., by the time she was age 25. And she wanted to occupy a public service job. So she did everything she could to make this a reality, to make this happen. I mean, she did all the right things. She changed her major from computer science to political science. And then she joined a campaign to help this candidate run for office. And he promised her this big, lucrative job in Washington, D.C. if he won the election. And she was ready to go. It was awesome. But you know, me being a big city girl, born and raised in Washington, D.C. on Capitol Hill, I could never understand why someone had public service on their bucket list. <laughs> it always confused me. But I'm not one to judge because I understand that A to B plan. Because sometimes life doesn't look like this, does it? That's right. Absolutely not. Most of the time it looks like this, doesn't it? Woo! <laughs> Absolutely. And if the latter is true, then I propose that we embrace chaos more often than not. Let yes. me explain. What is chaos? Well, basically, it's disorder. It's confusion. Scientifically, it's unformed matter. It has no shape or form. It's a very incredible thing to deal with. And the best way to describe physically what chaos can look like is a tornado. Now, for eight or nine years, I had the privilege of working side by side and in contact with meteorologists at the National Weather Service. And they have a whole bunch of information about weather. And one of the things I found out about tornadoes is that not one or two uh, tornadoes are the same. In fact, tornadoes can be different. Some of them have a destruction path of 500 feet, and some have a destruction path of just seven feet. Some tornadoes are intimidating and are far off than this dark funnel cloud. And then some tornadoes are even weaker, where they're invisible to the eye. You can't even see them. But the most important thing to understand is that when there is a tornado, it's time to either evacuate or abandon. In fact, the World Economic Forum, through their Global Risk Report, established that of all the global risks in the world, the greatest with the greatest likelihood are severe weather events. But you know, when it's time for you to evacuate an area or abandon it based on first responders, they tell you, you can't collect anything. It's time to leave everything you know behind. Leave your homes, leave your, ho your houses, leave all your personal assets, all your dreams, your realities, your expectations. You have to leave all those things behind to get to a safer place. But for some people, sounding an alarm and hearing the time to, to evacuate is not a sign to evacuate or abandon. It's actually an indicator to pursue. 
And that's what storm chasers do. Storm chasers are the most riskiest activity you can possibly engage in. But for some reason, these people have this tenacity and desire and eagerness to follow the storm, to chase the chaos. Why is that? It's because they know that unless they embrace the chaos, they cannot capture the data that's used to help determine how to safely secure ourselves from disastrous weather. So they pursue the chaos. You know, in my career, I've seen plenty of chaos. My A to B plan, the straight line, had not worked. It's interesting because I thought that maybe I discovered a new phenomenon. Because every time I got a new job, the person who hired me would leave. <laughs> maybe I had a personality complex here. Every time I got a new job, when I got the job at NIH as a risk manager, the supervisor retired. When I got my new job as director at the Department of Commerce, my supervisor left. When I got the book deal to publish a risk management textbook, the acquisitions editor left the company. <laughs> and then when I had my film premiere for k Not for Warriors, the veterans and PTSD, the young woman at the Wilson Center who actually put together the whole screening found a new job. I was thinking, is it me? <laughs> Could it be me? <laughs> but one other thing I found discovered was this. I had realized that it wasn't me, but it's something I call just-in-time chaos. I came just in time, someone else heard the alarms, they heard the sirens in their own lives, and they had to attend to the chaos in their own life. And they had to abandon everything they knew, their career, their position, their organization to pursue something else. And then I became a benefactor. So if you don't abandon, then you must pursue. And here are some of the key benefits of chaos. The presence of chaos means the absence of what? Structure. Structure. That's good news. The benefits of chaos means the absence of what? Standards. There are no standards. The benefits of chaos means it eliminates what? Competition. Competition. The benefits of chaos means what's normal becomes questionable. The benefits of chaos, this is a definitive time to define what your new normal will be. The benefit of chaos. It's a great time to redefine your life and go into territories you don't even know. The benefits of chaos is to claim your universal real estate. And the benefit of chaos is by the time the storm clears and things settle, you realize that you have established new opportunities for yourselves that you never knew before. A stake in the ground, in the land. That's opportunity, that's wide open, that's been occupied by others before, but is now available to you. You know, I ran into my friend from Memphis, Tennessee. She never did finish that dream of hers, that A to B plan. She never reached Washington, D.C. by the age of 25. But she did become a civil rights activist. And she had the opportunity to be one of the main speakers at the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. And she helped polarize marriage equality in the state of Maryland. And by the way, she did get that government job 30 years later, all because she embraced chaos. You need to embrace chaos. Let that be your guiding post for who you want to be where you want to go, and how you want to live. Thank you. Yeah.